Hello and welcome to another episode on Riding Gear. This is Power Drift and today we are talking about what we promised you last time and that would be boots. So if you haven't seen the series yet, we've already talked about why you should be wearing riding gear, how to pick a motorcycle jacket, how to pick motorcycle gloves and what's the base layer and why you should really really think about wearing them and of course motorcycle pants which leads us to the next topic and that would be boots. Motorcycle boots are important for exactly the same reason as the gloves which is they are of part of your body which is far away from your core which means that the forces at that part as you're moving through air in a crash are bigger than usual they're full of small bones so they're quite easy to damage and like most of your body parts you only get those uh, for the rest of your life so you might as well do a good job of protecting them i also happen to think that motorcycle boots change your riding experience and they feel really good to wear i've been wearing them since the early 2000s i had a pair of oxstars which became tcx and it remains one of my favorite brands and as it turns out today i have their top of the line race boot this is the rt race pro air which i'm going to use to explain what the motorcycle boot is about now before we go into that let's talk about what kind of injuries do motorcycles inflict on feet in a crash and obviously the abrasion injury is one in there abrasion we've talked about in the jackets it's when you're sliding along the road and the road's trying to eat away at your skin that's an abrasion injury leather is traditionally a good material for it but there are a lot of synthetic materials that do that very well as well on a motorcycle you can have abrasion on your foot without really having a crash and that's why a lot of motorcycle boot get toe sliders and the toe sliders job is to absorb contact with the road without really damaging the boot and you can see that this magnesium slider has quite a bit of abrasion already going on but at the heel and on the outside of the heel there are also usually what look like toe sliders uh, in terms of materials and their job is to protect you in a crash by allowing the boot to slide easily along the road rather than catch if it catches they might generate enough force to flip your body in that case the injuries multiply the second kind of injury is a relatively uh, infrequent injury because most people don't really get trapped under their motorcycle but it's called the crush injury where something heavy falls on a part of your foot in the process of a crash and it could lead to bone damage and what the boot does about that is put a quite a bit of protection in and that's why motorcycle boots are actually quite hard to walk around in so there will be a box around your toe it's a little cup into which your toe slide as you wear the boot this cup used to be steel at, at many 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 years ago but they've been increasingly using high grade plastics and the reason for that is plastics tend to bounce back whereas metals tend to deform and stay deformed which means if they trap your foot it's really hard to get your foot out of the boot at the end of a crash there is similarly another cup that's going to be at your heel it's called the heel cup and the toe cup both of these are essential parts all the motorcycle boots you buy should have at least a plastic uh usually nylon or pu uh heel cup and a toe cup that's the start of your protection good boots will also connect them with a little bit of a steel shank in the middle and the shank's job is to not allow your foot's bed to be bent like that uh in the case of an accident so let's say the force is falling in the middle of your foot it makes it harder for it to bend like that and break in the middle the third thing that you want to notice the third kind of injury obviously is the hyperflexion injury and you should notice that all of these are about impact injuries okay so hyperflexion injury is when you take a human body's joint like the ankle for example and bend it in a direction it's not supposed to go this is why most motorcycle boots are really difficult to walk around in or they're very noisy because they build a really large hinge like this one into the back and the hinge's job is to restrict movement in these directions on all sides so that in the case of an accident when the motorcycle is trying to twist your boot it's not able to there is structural protection in the boot that prevents your foot from taking all of those weird shapes and then things snapping inside if you want to try this out for yourself don't try this for yourself take a finger and start pushing it back what you're trying to do is hyperflex the finger if you go far enough things will have to start breaking to accommodate the forces that you're putting on the top of your finger and things will start breaking usually either at this joint or at this joint that's hyperflexion and that's what the boot tries to prevent now the problem with motorcycle boots is at the top of the range especially race boots they start looking like this and can you really wear something like this to work well if you worked at power drift you would be able to but since you don't you're going to have to look for something more subtle or explain to your office that it's all right for you to look like that which is what i've done for a long time before i came into this business but i'm happy to say that my initial research shows that right 8 to 10000 rupees roughly most of the websites that sell motorcycle boots do seem to have normal leather looking uh, boots what you want to ensure is that they at least cover the ankle bone because if they don't then they don't really serve that much of a protective purpose this is where your ankle bone is it sticks out and therefore if you're going to crash chances are it will hit the ground and therefore you do want it 
consciously protected and your boots do need to cover your ankle bones in fact before i could buy my first motorcycle boot i was using regular leather shoes but i would always wear them over the ankle and it's a habit that's remained today there are shorty boots that cover just your ankle so the height is about this much you get mid-range boots which are about that tall and you get full size boots which are this much or a little bit taller and they come almost up to your knee i exclusively used full size boots that's what I prefer, but you don't have to. You have to figure this out. A mid boot that overlaps with your shin protection that's in your riding pants should still be quite protective. Shorties, not so much, but shorties are convenient to wear around every day, so you have to pick. In terms of price, the height correlates very well to price. So as I said, most websites seem to have non-sporty looking boots at low price points like eight eight and a half thousand rupees but by about 14 15 thousand rupees you do have shorty boots which quite a bit of protection built in and including some of the big brands so tcx is my favorite motorcycle boot brand apart from daytona uh, daytona is a german brand both of them make top of the line boots they're extremely comfortable from the go and both of them make shorty boots as well Below that are other economy brands and my favorite economy brand in that space is Forma uh, and I think the Forma Adventure is one of my favorite cheap boots. It's about 17,000 rupees. Motorcycle boots aren't cheap. Just we have to get past that. Forma Adventure, I know a lot of people who use them and they're really, really good. They are waterproof and I'll come to that in just a minute. But my point is, if you have eight and a half to 10,000 rupees, you can actually get yourself fairly decent motorcycle boots. They might be unbranded or from brands you don't recognize. But if you do your research about how much protection they're offering, you should be able to get a reasonably good boot. The really good boots are about 15 to 19,000 rupees. That's where you get a large choice, international brand, C certifications, full protections, and all kinds of choices in terms of colors, in terms of styles, in terms of designs, and in terms of roles as well. The really top of the line boots, boots like this sit closer to the 30,000 or 40,000 rupee mark. In fact, the Daytona Transopen GTX uh, is, uh, is used to be a 40,000 rupee boot. It's now about 35,000 rupees. And one of the reasons for that is the entire boot is made of really, really high quality leather. It's handmade, it's German, uh, not made in China. It's got a comprehensive warranty package and they'll even replace the waterproofing if you manage to break the waterproofing. So Daytona is from Motoporto store. TCX is sold by High Note Performance. But the point is, almost everybody has a choice of brands that you can go to. Most people from lazy as bikers, high note performance, etc. have an economy line of boots that are cheap and an expensive line of boots that are at the top and offer more features and protection. So you do have quite a lot of choice. Then comes the question of waterproof boots. Should you be buying waterproof boots? Honestly, only your feet can answer that question. I am lucky because my feet don't sweat or stink, so I can actually get away with wearing a Gore-Tex boot all the year round without really noticing too much. But I know people whose feet get hot, they get sweaty and for those people wearing a waterproof boot all year will be absolutely insane because the stink that will come out of that boot, the discomfort on the motorcycle is just not worth it. So my point to you is if you're riding a lot in the rain, you might need to think about a waterproof boot eventually as a standalone purchase. But in the meantime, you can get boot covers or something like that to get yourself over that hump. On the other hand, if your feet don't stink and you do ride a lot in the rain, you might be able to get away with just buying one pair of waterproof boots and doing your entire cycle of riding with that one boot. The final question is what kind of boot should you purchase? Should you purchase a race boot like this? Should you get an EDV boot which is quite a bit lower in protection? Or should you go the other way and buy motocross boots which are ridiculously protective but they're also almost impossible to walk around in? Well, that's a choice that you're going to have to make. I have been using top of the line race boots for 20 years now so I can tell you that it is possible to take something like this, something that might be worn by a MotoGP rider at one end and somebody like me who's just riding around on the street on small big motorcycles, scooters, everything and it seems to work. It's also dependent on the brand. I found that TCX seems to make really comfortable boots from day one and that makes this part quite easy. Daytona is just like that. But there are other famous brands like CD and Dainese who make very narrow toe boxes, which means that your toes always feel like they're being squeezed by the boot and that gets uncomfortable. So wearing some of their boots, even their street boots all day can become quite a bit of a challenge if you have wide feet. So there is a little bit of research that you need to do. And if you've bought a sneaker, you already know most of how this research needs to be done. To add that, you have to add certifications and protection and put the two together and you should be able to get yourself a boot. To summarize, your budget needs to be between 10,000 to about 12,000 for a basic boot. I would say 15 to 19,000 for a reasonably good protective boot with a lot of choice. And if you want a top of the line boot, you're looking at close to 30, 35,000 rupees in terms of expenses. But I will tell you this, 
once you get used to the feeling of riding with a motorcycle boot in terms of the feedback that comes from your motorcycle to you in terms of the idea that there's so much protection happening for you down there the experience changes so much that you'll probably never want to ride a motorcycle without wearing them again they're life-changing thank you so much for watching this is our series on riding gear we've already talked about why you should be wearing riding gear how to buy a riding jacket how to buy riding gloves how to buy pants why you should be thinking about base less and today we spoke about boots so what that brings us to next obviously is helmets and we'll talk about that next time but you should know that we did talk about helmets it was an episode almost 40 minutes long it's on our youtube obviously where i'm talking about helmets certifications what goes into them and how you should be buying them they're also available in all the top audio podcast platforms please go check it out and come back i'll give you a quick summary next time on how to look at a helmet and what you should be buying and what kind of budgets you need to bring Thank you so much for watching. We are still at home. We are still fighting this battle with the coronavirus. And I'm doing my part by staying out of the crowds, staying at home and being as socially distant as possible. I hope you are part of the solution as well. Thank you so much for watching. This is Power Drift. Stay home, stay strong.